uh, let's uh, start. It's like we are uh, Piotr Migdał and Klemenkiewicz. Uh, and we would like to talk. Uh, we would like to talk about quantum game photons, a project that we are developing, and one that we started developing at the Centrum, Center for Quantum Technologies in Singapore, uh, an institute that some of us uh, may know. Like that's uh, basically when it comes to me, it's like my background is in quantum optics from ICFO in Spain. But then I turned to data visualization and uh, machine learning. Though, as you see, from time to time I go uh, journeys back to physics, like with this quantum game. When it comes to uh, Clem, it's for you. Do you want me to uh, introduce myself now? Yeah. Um, so, hi, I'm Clem. Uh, I'm a designer and uh, I was responsible for the visual side of the game, that, and I will talk about it a bit more uh, later. Okay, so it's like, and when it comes to the game, so like before, just we, we give a talk, just we want to show how it works, more or less. Uh, so basically, it's like it's online, it's quantumgame.io. When you play that, it's a puzzle game with actual elements from quantum optics. So for example, here you have uh, a single uh, photon emitter. Some mirrors, and the goal is to make this photon reach the target. And if you do so, basically you get this uh, congratulations screen. And step by step, it gets more and more complicated. So from concepts like uh, from concepts like uh, inter interference, which we take a slightly later, but now just we have superposition. You can also see that what happens, and all, that each time only a single particular clip. But more, uh, but uh, but also it's not only about a game when we play things. Also, we are able to show steps uh, step by step. You can see what's going on here with our photon step by step, and the simulation underneath is uh, uh, is. Re uh, correct in the sense that it's a simulation of actual state of photons. It's not only a fancy laser stuff. Like what puzzles, but, of, but if you want to replicate the things that you can, for example, replicate interference. So again, this is things and beam here, and then it goes back. And so we can divide it, and again, we can interfere it back to the same arm of an interferometer. And step by step, the puzzles get more and more complicated. Sometimes the emphasis is on physics, sometimes the emphasis is on, say, uh, puzzle. So basically, we don't add anything more complicated with physics, but at the same time, we add things that are more complicated when it comes to uh, the puzzling challenge. And let's get, let's go back to the slides. It's the game. You can open it. It should work on desktop. On mobile, like we still work on it, uh, working so it works on mobile. But sometimes there are challenges. So sometimes it works. Sometimes on some devices, the experience may be not as as good. But let's uh, move a step back. So what was the, our motivation? Why uh, did we de develop this game, and what do you want to do with it next? So basically, like uh, it goes to playing, it's not only about humans. Also, animals do have fun; they play with each other. Sometimes there are species that normally would eat each other. For example, this polar bear would easily eat a wolf. And you can even look online for videos, say of dogs and magpies or candle weasels to see this play playful behavior when they learn the world by playing. It's a very, very different uh, setting than any other activity. And 
theater prioritize that it's all about uh, learning. So providing an environment which which it's very easy to learn new skills, but well <laughs> without actually hurting yourself. And when kids learn things, well when they learn of numbers. Do you think that they usually start with uh, playing with apple, apples, toys, etc., or do they start with the formal fundamental construction? Uh, well, I don't have kids myself, uh, but as you know, but uh, for those of you who, who does, I guess you know, it's not fifty-fifty. I guess one option is much more common. The same thing is about the same thing is with classical mechanics. Do kids start with playing with balls, uh, ropes, uh, blo uh, blocks, etc., or do they start with differential equations and Newton's law for, law for, laws of motion? But for some reason, we kind of believe that the only way to start uh, learning quantum mechanics is by starting with complex numbers and linear algebra. It's uh, ah, it's like uh, Pavel says you could, that Pavel said you you can't hear me like it's at all like how does it work? Because I have no idea. How my, how I my can, I can I can hear you very well. I can hear you as well. My connection is good. Uh, I just realized that uh, only one uh, person uh, saying that the connection is not good, but another person just said that it works. Okay. 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 So I, I I think that pr probably it's uh, yeah it works fine. So probably for yeah, most great. people it's, it's okay. okay. Let's continue. Okay. So like if there's some issues, like those, uh, can also of, of course write at any time. Uh, so why do you think that it's uh, it's the only way to learn quantum mechanics is uh, via mathematics? Well, and you take it for granted, especially especially the, uh, that unless you studied physics. This looks like elvish. At least when I show it to people who, are, who don't have background in quantum information, quantum computing, quantum physics, or even like any kind of engineering, for them it's like this random it's, it's sorcery, basically. And even worse, sometimes it's not only about the lack of understanding, but it's something about misunderstanding. So that people think, okay, quantum physics is strange. So maybe it's related to, I don't know, God, consciousness, free will, afterlife, telepathy, etc. So it's, uh, so it's, uh, well, so like, I know, annotate, sorry, just I got some strange thing clicked over the annotation. I want, like, if any, so. So the thing is that uh, people uh, people associate it with things which it isn't. So like to the point that a few times it happened that after a talk, I got someone asking questions. Okay, it's like it's nice, but how I can apply it to quantum healing? And I know it works because my friend uh, was healed, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's. I don't know how to answer that, but I think it's that sometimes with quantum physics is not about uh, some things have negative friction values. So basically, spread even though it's about goodwill, they spread more disinformation than information. And I like uh, when it comes to this uh, thing, I like a lot, of, like a lot of book, how the hippies said physics, which is more or less exactly about that. It, it's about one basis of quantum information. From California, it's not the only one because this was one branch starting from Russia and Holevo. But basically, they were trying to use quantum physics and quantum measurement for exactly like telepathy, contacts with ghosts, etc. Most of them, they were actually physicists by training, and they did it in their free time. They performed quite a few experiments, of course. None of those experiences worked, but in some sense it was like a nice uh, thing between science and pseudoscience. Like it was like not as uh, very far from a region which was uh, which you can easily classify. And one uh, paper about transmission of information faster than light 
Puna would be, of course, wrong, but wrong in a very subtle way. Subtle to the extent that most people, including Feynman, were not able to tell why it's not true. It turned out uh, that to show that it's not true, you need to show that you cannot cr clone arbitrary quantum states. So then the Jurek Wheeler published uh, the no cloning theorem, showing that it's not possible to clone that. And basically, a paper to show uh, one flaw in the previous uh, this kind of pseudoscience paper was a basis for quantum information and, and then hence quantum computing. Uh, and also, like when it comes to my stance on this kind of issues, is very close to David Griffiths, an author of one very popular textbook, textbook is, uh, for quantum physics, which is basically to the Lyman, the philosopher of the classical physicist, a statement of the form this particle does not have a well defined position, sounds vague, incompetent, or worst of all, profound. But he, well, issues that it's none of these. And I think like is each time when you feel it's something profound about quantum physics, it's a very, very, very bad angle. I, mean, I know it's tempting, I, but I think it's very bad because every complicated discipline has very, has many things counterintuitive, including classical math equations. I don't know if any, for any of you, pointing vector is intuitive. But we shouldn't, uh, but just because something is complicated, I don't think we should uh, make it metaphysical. Especially as that I think uh, that many things that we consider them counterintuitive are just things we are not used to. Because as, as you saw, kids play with balls, strings, ropes, and, uh, logs, apples, etc. since they are, well, <laughs> very young. Usually people don't play with quantum mechanics at all. And if they, if they do, they start at 20 or so during a course, and usually they differentiate a lot of equations and calculate a scalar product. And I think that it's the only, the only way to change that is basically to create tools in which people can interact with quantum world, but in a way which is uh, very accessible and uh, focused on playing. And they do have some experience when it comes to teaching uh, high school kids. I taught quite a few groups, both in Poland and in uh, Catalonia. And it turns out that if, okay, they're very smart high school students. They are not typical ones. They're like, more like this Olympia in physics, and mathematics. Uh, right. But still, it was possible to introduce quantum mechanics only if they know two things, vectors up to four coordinates, and if they know complex numbers. But with complex numbers, it's actually very easy to introduce them, and I think they are beautiful, so it makes sense to introduce complex num numbers on their own. And then it turns out that uh, if we... I did uh, one uh, training like four times, twice in Catalonia, twice in Poland. And each time, it turns out that actually they were able to learn things. Not only that, okay, they are quants, or they are zeros and ones, or zeros uh, and ones at the same time, but they are able to, show, uh, to prove the non cloning theorem, they were able to look at various uh, cryptography protocols all with actual mathematics, so not, not only hand waving. And one of my students, he drew uh, diagrams for my blackboard, uh, blackboard drawings. It's uh, from his notes. And when like, my drawing style is horrible, I saw like, okay, actually it makes sense. It's nice. It's like mojito drawing is his invention, by the way, not on the blackboard. Uh, so why not make it automatic? So why not turn such drawings to something which is something like Lego blocks for quantum physics? In a way that we are able to put things on a board and simulate it. So we don't need to calculate everything by hand. And basically I created the first quantum game. 
I started doing it sometime after I finished my PhD st study. It is like also browser game JavaScript. And basically, there were puzzles of how to lead one photon to one or more detectors. The tools that we pop top popular among various people, among various people. And I tested basically for, on people first, from people, okay, actually not on rats, but from people who have no background in physics at all, people who are more or less 14 years old, people that uh, were, who just finished the PhD in uh, quantum physics. And even I got emails from a few well known professors. One of the nicest one was about trying to prove that it's impossible to solve the last puzzle. But actually, it is possible. I checked it. So it turned out that, well, one professor put a lot of effort in, in proving it, uh, trying to solve this the last level. But also, I got a different email from a different professor, Arthur Eckert from CQT, Arthur Eckert from the Eckert Protocol, that uh, asked me if I keep developing this game. I said, oh, well, actually, I don't because I don't have, don't my, don't have much time. So he said, well, so maybe you can come to Singapore for three months. So I said, okay, yes, it's nice, but it's a bigger problem project. So just by myself, it's well, it wouldn't uh, push it much. I said, okay, so just we have a budget for four more people, invite them, and we see, uh, we will see where it goes. And if only a single wish, I wanted to ha have the best uh, quantum game, the coolest quantum game, the known multiverse. So basically, well, I looked for people. Glenn was one of the people who applied, but also uh, other people like Chiara from Switzerland, uh, Philip from France, uh, Ivana Pavel, and Melissa Zink. And uh, we played a bit in Singapore with also various interactive demos. And maybe just it's actually a place that I can give. Uh, the microphone to Clem to talk about her perspective and ideas and impressions. Thank you, Piotr. Um, so I'll try to switch to my screen right now. Uh, can you see my uh, screen? I see it. Okay, great. Um, so, um, as Piotr just said, um, I joined the team uh, in Singapore. Um, here is Chiara, uh, another team member, and this is how uh, working on a on a game looks like on a tropical island like Singapore. Uh, highly recommend it. Um, and I'll uh, talk today about uh, some design inspirations. Um, that we looked at um, while working on the game. Um, so one of the uh, first main things we decided to also to just keep from the old game, um, but it was inspired on the, um, all sorts of uh, typical diagrams from uh, quantum optics literature. Um, that like this one, for example, um, that in themselves they have some kind of a grid, and we thought that they uh, they really suit uh, drop and drag uh, drag and drop puzzle that we were building. Mm. Um, another uh, things uh, we looked at were all sorts of um, explorable explanations and in general uh, nice intuitive ways of explaining uh, complicated concepts to everyone. Uh, this is a very nice, a very, very simple example of uh, explaining uh, Fourier transform uh, with just one sentence and some very simple color coding and suddenly it's uh, it's um, uh, much easier to understand than just a plain uh, equation. Mm. Okay, and uh, as for the visual language of the game, this is uh, the logo. 
and um, you, you've seen uh, the game in the beginning uh, when Piotr showed it. Um, so it was important for us to make something that uh, would be a bit a bit spooky, a bit weird, but it was also very important for us not to uh, make it science fiction. We try to remember that, be, as as Piotr said earlier, that um, quantum physics many times is perceived as something as science fiction, as something uh, weird, magical. So it was very very important for us to to show that no, this is. Uh, it's actually something that is actually happening. We're not making things up. Um, so, uh, for example, the logo is, uh, is based on the photon of a rendering of a photon from our game. And um, it was actually made with the same algorithm that is uh, rendering the, the, the photon on, like, in different uh, states in the, in the game. Another thing that uh, was very important for us was to make this game um, very inclusive um, and of course we wanted it to be uh, interesting for gamers for people interested in quantum physics but we also wanted to make it um, inviting to a much wider audience um, so for example when we were choosing uh, the characters uh, for the game this is one of the main uh, characters rock so uh, it was we decided to to make all of them uh on human gender less not to go into any kind of uh, uh stereotypes and uh, to really make it you can see in the game afterwards it's stones it's uh uh it's uh, there are carnivorous plants and and elements like this um and uh at the same time, we also, of course, wanted it uh, to be interesting and useful for um, for physicists, for educators, and uh, and for uh, students. So, uh, first of all, all of the uh, all of the uh, math behind this is real, and all the computations. So we, we also decided to make all sorts of tools uh, for the more advanced users to be able to, to see what's happening and to, to use the, uh, uh, the game and the tools from the game also for, for, other, um, for other things. So, and they're, also, they're available for everyone on the GitHub. So uh, here are some examples of the Mm, uh, interactive uh, viewers with, uh, for example, uh, cat vectors that can be viewed in different ways, and uh, um, also matrices um, for anyone who's interested in uh, quantum physics, quantum computing, and knows a bit more about it. This can be very useful, and because it's interactive, it's we also think it's it just. Uh, more useful um, than the typical tools. Um, yeah, so I think this is uh, design-wise, these were the most important uh, things for us. So, Piot, if you want to continue. I think I can't hear you. Yeah, so uh, now we, okay, so I switched on. So basically, I would like to continue on this uh, part of, uh, about uh, state visualizations. It's second screen, and I want to open. So when it goes to the game, we wanted to it, it to be didactic. So, like, it's not only about uh, a challenge, puzzle challenge, which okay, it is also about a puzzle challenge, but we want it to be some kind of entry drag into quantum world. To allow people to, to learn a bit about the quantum world. But step by step. So, it's not a lesson. It's not like something which is only a textbook with some interactive pieces. It's the other way. It's an interactive thing that if someone wants to dive deeper, 
Well, they are open and they are invited. So, for example, in this Miss Peter, it's a Miss Peter from the game, but also we are able to show what's going on. We are able to show step by step what are the quantum states. We are able to look at different notations. So we can look at polar coordinates, Cartesian, or like some color coding, which sometimes is easier to encode visually. It's the same equation. And as, as uh, from this Fourier transform example, we have also color coded what is what are the so basically like this an element is Scipedia. Uh, so like it's Scipedia elements you can look at all things that are in game because all of the, uh, them are based on really things. They are not made up. They may be idealized, of course, but not made up. And folks with this means Peter, 50-50 non-polarizing. And you can see what, what happens step by step. Team, think, 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 and it disappears somewhere out of the box. Also, we, can, we are able to play with various ways to present this state. So for example, like polarization, polar coordinates, or Cartesian, or polar but uh, by units of full rotation, is, is tau, two times pi. Or we can use some color coding, which uh, use, uh, uses color for phase. We can also interact with these things, not like static, it's not only a few uh, PNG images, it's a full simulation. In the same way as like I can describe before, there is some color coding. Like you see, like it's amplitude, there's like XY, direction, polarization. This is a description, which like we intend it to be more like an NG thing. So it's not uh, a clone of Wikipedia, but more uh, how to transi uh, make a transition from this game to something which is uh, for you. And we try to look at links which are the best, the most approachable things. So basically, well, there are quite a few resources online, some are much nicer than the others. Or sometimes uh, we, can, we found uh, nice these resources at various levels, from LE5, so explaining like if I, if I were five, to things pretty, pretty advanced. Uh, but also, like we put some effort into developing. Transition matrix, the transi transition matrix. So basically, to show the whole quantum operation in a way which is much more approachable that, than a table of numbers. And uh, like I said, it was basically a lot of collaboration uh, between me and Clem from like uh, graphic side, all ideas basically are Clem when it comes to. Physics, like um, physics, quantum physics by training, but it was like a lot of back and forth uh, work because we wanted to be nice, accurate, but also accessible at people at various levels. So people who enter, enter the domain, but also uh, for people who know what, what are the things. For example, you see, like it's like horizontal up input, output is uh, horizontal right and horizontal. Uh, up. And we see the same thing on, on the side. We can see side by side what happens there. When you look at uh, some, some entry, we see both phase and amplitude. See on this. And also we can look at uh, different coordinates. We can like this H for the horizontal vertical, but also like uh, linear and sorry, left handed and right handed circular position. And in this case, you see, okay, it's exactly the same as from the log of game. But also what we see that, well, things get changed in the mirror. So like if it gets reflected, left does get, does, uh, get changed to right and vice versa, as we would expect. And the same thing, like it's, actually, I think it's even more interesting for say sugar solution. Yeah, for example, that's like solution that rotates light. So you can see what happens there. Rotated. But also, this like is a rotation matrix, you know. But when you change for, for this like also rotation for this diagonal antigon basis, 
But if you change to circular basis, then you see that it's a sugar this different uh, phase shift for left-handed and right-handed polarization. So this we wanted to make it as fast as possible. Also, like it's even possible to change the order of dimension. Some operations are easier in one than the other. For example, there's like a position is better, and we should change that. Uh, polarizing Peter, and then we can see that uh, well, that way, but it's much easier to look at polarization in that direction. When you see that for one polarization, nothing changes, but for the other, we have reflection. So it's like pink. Uh, when it comes to uh, these equations, we get what we want. We wanted to make it as simple as possible to use it in all materials. So this is a whole library for numerics we just wrote it's in the same group project as quantum game, but also it's possible to as you see, create various operators and use them interactively. The JS TD5, so that you can open it, you can play with that, and you can not only use operators which are predefined in this game, but you can basically type here any operator. Anything uh, what you wish. It doesn't need two dimensions, can be four dimensions, can be particles, spin, basically anything. Okay. Some concept of the claim. Okay, so this what's next? Like so it's like this thing is still in development. So basically we want to add more particles, we want to polish it again because the last few months we focused basically on polishing the simulation and display of equations, but we want to show the most typical things when it comes to quantum information, optics, and computing. But even more, you think about creating a whole interactive textbook, interactive materials for teaching quantum physics, well, ideally to a large, large audience, so not only for people who are into physics, but also for people who otherwise would give a pass. There are already concept arts for, say, parameter down conversion and quite a few other processes that involve more than one photon or more in any other, or in general, more than one particle. And we, when it comes to Encyclopedia, there's maybe also so like in this repository, quantum Encyclopedia, we try to make it as easy to create custom examples without coding. So, yes, you need to learn a bit of this notation, how to encode those elements here, but you don't need to, uh, to code to create your own direct examples. You want it to be a good material for various educators worldwide, which well, are able to grasp some technical notation at the same time, and not interested in programming things on their own. Uh, when it comes to, I did some photos uh, on, in laboratories, I continue also in Trent laboratory, just to be able to use such things in, uh, as examples in the game, to make uh, it clear for people who have no experience in, uh, with an optical laboratory that everything here is real, and to give them sense how does it look in, in real life. So it's and here, like you see, like the super story, those like components like quantum game, the main one, bracket view, it's this, this thing for visualizing states and equations. You can use using you can use it in your own projects. And quantum tensors is this uh, the main engine for calculating basically various operations. It's powerful enough that you can this even thing for quantum circuits. You can 
you can have a very complicated quantum circuits, including conditional measurements in the meantime uh, with ease. And there are some examples of such circuits. But it's more general, so we can, we are not restricted to qubits by, uh, by no means. When it comes to the coding part, we did it mostly in TypeScript, which is a version of JavaScript. JavaScript because it's a language for browsers. So even though it's not as popular as Python in computing, it's pretty much needed to have it uh, used uh, one version of JavaScript or, or the other to have it playable in a browser. Uh, when it comes to the framework for the whole application we used view, because it's simple and modular, and there are quite a few other things that are useful so that to make it nice and easy. There's a whole blog post in front in medium about tech choices for this game. And when it comes to uh, these quantum tensors, also like uh, as you imagine, the logo by the graphic application by Clem, it's a sky's the limit to cut computing, but also you can easily have this is like its whole Oman the interference. At this point written not with this nice output, but only with text-based output. But basically it's well, we, we can we can code anything there, anything we want. I think like actually it's like we already talk uh, talk about that. And when it comes to like nice things, so my objection is <laughs> so I give uh, me to them. The way I prefer to not switch off uh, slides is that very very often when people develop things for quantum physics or quantum information. All visualization is something like a second thought. So, okay, they use basic charts, basic uh, my LaTeX, or something, or, or use the first approach that works to some extent. Sometimes it's enough, usually it isn't. But in our case, we wanted to focus pretty much on making the visuals nice, useful, and making it a project on its own. The integral part is something when we can push forward the way how people visualize quantum states. Maybe just uh, a few words from Clem. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you have to want to say something about this part or like? Um, th these are just some uh, sketches from uh, some earlier stages when we thought of uh, the matrices, how to how to show matrices uh, full of numbers in a visual, nicer visual way. Um, so, yeah, so these are just some of the countless sketches uh, we talked about with Piotr and in the end uh, developed what, uh, what we have now. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to, uh, to talk about uh, something specific? No, just, just a little bit, just, just I wanted to, to show like this, it's, it's a lot of train and error just with thinking and yeah. testing. What are the good approaches? What are the general ones? And which, par which parts uh, should be like, emphasized and which is are, well, maybe too confusing? I mean, I think what I personally learned in this project um, is that uh, surprisingly, or not surprisingly, uh, apparently many times in such projects, especially if we talk about things that are open source, that are made small teams, um, the, the teams are not, um, not very diverse. And so I think this is maybe something for, uh, for everyone who thinks of, of, uh, of uh, doing such projects. It's, I think it's always too good, for example, to look for a, um, uh, not only to have a team of uh, physicists, because that's probably always make this uh, process uh, more interesting. Yeah, so like here I agree and I think it's, it was great that our team, for example, like me and Chiara uh, are into quantum physics. So Chiara is in the process of finishing her PhD in uh, quantum optics in, uh, in Zurich. Uh, when it comes to Clem and Philip, like it's like both you and Philip have little exposure to quantum except like some general things. Mm -hmm. Then it was it's a different angle of looking at quantum mechanics from the Newcomer's perspective. So some things may be 
which for others are, well, obvious, maybe like totally not obvious, but other things actually are not, uh, are not, uh, are not that hard. And without this perspective, I think it's impossible to create something which has a potential for a broad appeal. So like it's more or less like it, it, it's how it works. So like, uh, like work in progress, a lot of code, a lot of uh, things. Uh, here it's like uh, the, the drawing very Chiara of, of our team. If you want to play it like just it's as a game, just it's development, but you can experiment with, so, uh, with for example, the sandbox mode. Uh, it should work. But it's also like you can look with the repository. If you want to use uh, those head bracket viewers, totally do so. If you have any issues, totally email us. And we're very, very happy to help how to set up those visualizations in your project. They are totally free open source. So we are basically able to use it anywhere, anywhere you wish. And if you have any questions, like totally like us, Ask them right now or like later in, in, in the email. And if, even if you want to contribute in any way, also it's useful. And basically, uh, again, we'd like to have contributors for various uh, fields, various approaches. So, like, no matter what the field, I'm sure that you can contribute something. Even if it's just saying, okay, I don't understand that, which very often means that, okay, that maybe we didn't explain it well enough, or maybe we can approach it from a, another way. So, all right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. For thank you. Thank you. I'm open for discussion. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Clem. Uh, all right. Uh, are there any questions to Piotr and Clem? Maybe let me let me uh, ask the first question. Uh, if, uh, anyway, thanks that uh, uh, you shared this announcement and you are looking. You are open for collaboration. Uh, do you know? Uh, so I understand that there are currently there are four developers, right? Project or? Oh, it's like it's more complicated because you know just it's uh, one thing is like being uh, full time on the project in Singapore, right? Okay. But the other thing is after Singapore that uh, it's an op free open source project, but various people have uh, well <laughs> various amount of time, and thus we also it fluctuates. Okay. Mm -hmm. right, right there were now. more uh, programmers, especially Kuba, who was also part of the time in uh, in Singapore, and some other people that were helping us, especially in the end. There was uh, there is Pavel Janitsky who, who wrote uh, uh, generative music for the game. Um, okay. And I guess that there'll, there'll be more contributors. Yeah, so like, and right now, like, close to like, uh, core part is basically Plan Me uh, and Philips, like right now in the last three months, by the amount of contribution. Good. But again, like we're very open. So like just mm -hmm. if you have like a few hours, it's fine, it's nice. If you have like much more hours, it's of course even better. Uh, and everything here is like open source, so you can you are free to use it anywhere else. Okay. Uh, so in the in the title of this talk, uh, there was quantum game with photons too. So this number two means that this is a, a second version or the second uh, release. Second approach, okay. It's the kind of, so in some sense, like I uh, actually maybe I can show it like uh, as a side. If you see my screen, yes. it's like old quantum game. This is like an old quantum game, mm -hmm. which is uh, which is uh, from I don't know 2000. Like I wrote this somewhere, like when I released that, basically like uh, I think like 2000. 2014, 16, something like that. Mm -hmm. And it was the first approach. Like, with basically, it was a slightly different team. We got like some small grant for that. We developed the first part. Uh, we don't consider, like, we, in some sense, we had to create code from scratch because the, here, like, there were so many things that we did in a way that it's, they work, but they were not uh, easy for extension or for testing or for like collaboration on a bigger scale. So it was, we tried to take all best elements here and mm -hmm. redesign everything else basically. Plus make it open 
in a way, uh, of, um, in a way that it's very easy to add more photons, more particles, more other elements. All right. In some sense, it's it's yeah second version. Okay. Uh, made uh, from scratch. Made from scratch. Made yeah. from scratch. Okay, that's important. Yeah, I I remember that uh, I once or several times played this first version of Quantum Game. It was very nice. Uh, all right. Uh, do you know how many uh, people have already played? Uh, uh, this game, do you count it somehow? It's like the, the, when it goes to the, this the new one, like I don't count it, we don't count it much. Especially that there was no release yet. So, yes. I mean, it, it's available online because it's open source and we want it to be um, uh, visible uh, to everyone, but we, we haven't really released it. So, okay. Yes, so because the you... previous game, it was, uh, it was over 100,000. Uh, Hundred thousand. Wow. Yes. Nice. So it's, uh, Probably the most popular quantum gain on this planet. <laughs> <laughs> but but we want to be, uh, we want to aim much bigger because as you see, like there are quite a few clunky things here. This was, this thing was totally not working on uh, mobile phones. And there was no much hope to make small adjustments so it works. Uh, the current one kind of works, but kind of but between kind of and actually. It's, you, it's nice to play on phones. It's a big difference. So you yeah, can release it once uh, once we are confident that actually it works on phones. The extent that it's playable. Okay. Yeah, very nice. And are you are you planning uh, an official release? Or so like this is like it's one of creators of games. Like it's uh, John Car Carmack. He created. Uh, Doom, uh, Wolfenstein, Quake, etc. And now it's like he's working with this VR. Oculus VR. He's like, he, he has, uh, he had one piece uh, of wisdom that, uh, that I... okay, so anyway, he, when he, uh, each time when someone asked him what the release date, he said, when it's done. And to some sense, actually, well, it's like, we try to like to, to, to release something the next next month in April, April. When it comes to games, very often it's better to wait like one month or sometimes actually even like ten years. Like uh, some some games that took way longer. Let's hope not ten years. Though. Let's let's hope. Like it's like one one beautiful game released uh, kind of right now, like Black Mesa, which like took a remake of Half Life, which took I don't know like fourteen years to develop. Open source game, not open source, but like some kind of volunteer project. But, in, uh, but primarily, you want to have something which is nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's that's nice. All right. Are there more questions to Piotr and Clem? If not, then uh, yeah, thank you, Piotr. Thank you, Clem. I encourage uh, everyone. Thanks. I encourage everyone to uh, just try the game and try to play it. And of course, feel free to contact uh, Piotr and Clem if you have more questions or if you like uh, uh, to join their project. Uh, just let me show uh, several slides uh, uh, at the end. I would like to announce the next uh, meeting of the Warsaw Quantum Computing Group. Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah, I hope that you can see my screen. So the next uh, meeting will be hopefully very soon, in two weeks from now. And it will be also a webinar. Philip Maciejewski will give a talk about fighting readout noise on quantum devices. Um, so we'll start uh, uh, advertising the event and start registration soon, probably this week. And uh, also, uh, quite a new announcement. Uh, Vitek Kowalczyk from Zapata Computing uh, contacted me today and uh, told me that there are some job openings at Zapata Computing. I think that about 10 uh, engineering positions. So Zapata uh, also had to close uh, offices in uh, in Boston, in in US, in Canada, and uh, this, they are starting hiring people uh, for the uh, remote work. So it's opportunity uh, to apply. And if you are interested, you can contact uh, Vito. Uh, as far as I know, there are also uh, some more bi business positions. At least one here in in Europe free pre-sale position. So if someone is interested, feel free to contact Vitek here's an email address. So it's a competition to the quantum game 
<laughs> but uh, the requirements are uh, totally different, of course. Um, all right, uh, yeah, this event was supported by DAFCO, uh, as I said at the beginning. Uh, if you are interested in our future meetings, let's stay in touch on our Facebook group, fan page, YouTube channel, mailing list. Feel free to contact us if you have any questions. All right, uh, thank you for your attention. I hope that you liked our first webinar, and I also hope that uh, we meet again in two weeks from now. Bye bye, and I will start. I was stopping sharing my screen. Maybe so, thank you, Pavel. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.